I want you to stop and think, what does your relationship look like? Is it a kiss at the door or is it, oh no, he's home. Would you like to be glad your spouse is home? Maybe, you know, that kiss at the door. Well, today I'm going to give you a track to run on. I'm Connie Durham, your host of The Extraordinary Marriage, and today's episode is called Call for Leap Day Marital Tranquility. Who doesn't want peace in their marriage? Well, you know, often, just like today, when I was getting ready to record this, I get distracted. I get distracted by all the things around me. And I mean, working at the computer with a bunch of open windows um, is definitely not helpful. But you know, life is just like that. Life is a bunch of open windows or open doors. Whenever I think back to some of my years in Mary Kay, we would talk about why we as women get so frustrated. And I think that's because often we leave all the cabinet doors open. Yes. Picture your kitchen with all the cabinet doors open. And now it's looking messy and you don't know which thing to answer first. You know, men don't do that. They usually do one thing at a time. And as women, we pride ourselves in the fact that we can do so many things at the same time. But you know, when we've got all those cabinet doors open, we're distracted. And it's the same thing in our marriage. We get so busy with so many things, checking off our list that we forget about what is most important. And that's what we're going to look at today. What is most important? Now, I'm going to be using Stephen Covey's uh, seven habits, and I find those work for everything. Seven habits that really work into everything. So do you want marital tranquility? All right. Here is habit one. This is important. Be proactive. Be proactive. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space lies our freedom and our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and, listen to it, our happiness. That's a quote from Stephen Covey. And it is so very true. If we are not proactive then we are going to be reactive. And when we're busy or we're stressed or there's a lot going on, we become reactive, don't we? Well, there's a thing that I like to call the pause button. And sometimes if we're about to get angry and blast that person beside us, hit the pause button. Stop, hit the button mentally, take a deep breath, Think, how much does this really matter? Is it worth a fight? Or maybe it's the fact that we are so mad we just close up and we won't talk to our spouse. Is it really worth it? Do you know that sometimes uh, or many times the thing that we're fussing and fighting about with our spouse uh, is really not that important? It's some little something, it's some little nothing, or we've made a mountain out of a molehill. So the first thing is be proactive. By being proactive, you can keep a lot of junk from happening by learning to hit that pause button. The second thing is to begin with the end in mind. So often in our marriages, you know, we plan everything out. We plan vacations. Uh, If we are getting ready to uh, send our kids off to college, we plan everything about that event. If you are getting ready to paint a room, you plan what what color you're going to paint it and uh, uh, you know what all the decorations are going to be and what major colors are going to be in that room. So why in the world do we not plan our life? Why in the world do we not plan what we want our marriage to look like? I know a lady, uh, Debbie Slews, and she's on one of our episodes. She creates vision boards. You know, when people are building a business, they'll often create a 
vision board for what they want their business to look like. It helps them get that visual and reminds them of where they want to go. I know my daughter was uh, uh, thinking about having a baby about five years ago. And you know what? She had a little boy and she wanted a little girl. And so, you know what? I put a cute little baby girl on my vision board. That was my life board. And, you know, I had my business and stuff mostly on it, but that was important to me. I thought, oh, it'd be so great to have a boy and a girl. So I put a little picture of this cute little girl and, um, you know, I don't know how much power that has, but hey, I put it on there. I looked at it often and she did get pregnant and she had a cute little baby girl. So, you know, we want to have a vision for what we want in our life. We want to picture what we want. Otherwise, we just keep taking what we're going to get, right? We just keep taking what we're going to get. So what do we want to see in our marriage? You know, beginning with the end in mind, you know, like, you know, I want to, I want to see when I first get married, you know, honestly, you know, when I first got married, I didn't have much vision because I didn't know this and I didn't think about it. I only thought about this day and the next, but having that vision of, you know, what kind of family do I want? Where do we want to work at? And more important than that is how do we want to treat each other? Uh, do we want to support each other? Uh, my husband likes to uh, watch football and that's one of the few places that I'm not supportive because, I don't like to watch football. So I just take that time to go do something else that I want to do while he's watching football. But we, you know, we do music together. We travel together. We have family dinners together. We watch certain uh, shows that we both enjoy on TV. We do that together. One of our favorite is The Voice. I love that because we're both musicians. So we totally enjoy that. So I think we want to see uh, kindness, honesty, patience, and those kind of things in our marriage. And so that's a big thing. So create a vision board for what you want your marriage to look like. And the next thing is put first things first. Your spouse. Not the kids. Not your mom. Not your dad. You got to put your spouse first. So that is one of the most important things is knowing that you have each other's back, that you support each other, that you're there for each other, that whatever decisions are being made in the marriage, they are about your spouse, yourself and your spouse. I want you to think of three ways as you're looking at that, three ways you could support your spouse. And you might be thinking, hey, they don't support me. But that's not where we're going with this because we are being proactive and we're beginning, we're beginning with the end in mind, what we want it to look like, maybe not what it's looking like right now. So what are three ways that you could put your spouse first to make them feel important? The fourth one is think win, win. Let's be real. You know, as we're coming up as a kid, it's all about us. It doesn't matter if you got a couple of brothers and sisters, or you got none. If you have no brothers and sisters, then yeah, it's really about you, isn't it? But when you get married, it has to go from me to we. And I call this uh, having me-itis. My husband likes to call it the W-I-I-F-M radio station. What's in it for me? And that's where most of us are at, whether it's at work, um, or anywhere else that we're at, you know, maybe we're in a, a community club, a business club, or usually it is what's in it for me, W-I-I-F-M. Well, we have to get past that me-itis if we want to create a win-win. And we have to ask questions of each other. We have to listen to each other to figure out what each of us you know, what's important to each of us. And, you know, something might not be very important to me, but if it's really important to my husband, I want to make sure I support him in that. Now, I'm fortunate because he supports me in things. But, you know, when you act respectfully towards your spouse, then eventually, hopefully, that respect comes back to you. And it's always the thing where we have to go first we have to go first. The fifth thing is seek first to understand, then be understood. The thing is, 
when we're talking to our spouse, all we're thinking is we want them to be thinking about us and we want them to understand us. And we're not thinking about them. You know, say your spouse comes in, uh, in the door for work. And first thing you do, yes, I do this often. You're telling your spouse all the great stuff that went on for the day or all the stuff that didn't go on for the day or all the things you need for them to do. And maybe they had a hard day. Maybe they had a great day. Maybe they'd like to take a breath when they walk in the door. So seek first to understand and then to be understood. This is a really big place because we all communicate differently. I was just talking to a lady and she was talking about whenever, uh, you know, she would uh, get bothered with her husband, she would withdraw and she wouldn't talk to him. Now, sometimes that'd just be for a little while, but then she spoke of another person that she knew that would not speak to their spouse for three days. And everybody is unique and different. Well, her husband came to her and he was able to be straightforward. Now there's two kinds of straightforward. Straightforward as in <clears throat> you're lambasted and they say, listen, I am sick and tired of you doing this kiddish thing and not speaking to me. Or you can present it straightforward with love and care. Honey, you know, Every time you stop talking to me and you're mad at me, I have no idea why you're mad at me. And if you don't tell me what's bothering you, then I can't help you. I, I can't move past that. And everything is tone of voice, isn't it? Tone of voice and how we go about things. Well, everyone is different. And so we all present things different. We all react different. And that's what gets us in trouble is reacting, not being proactive, but reacting. We each have different things that are most important to us. My husband and I have in common, we both love music and we love our family. Uh, he loves football. I don't care so much for that. And you know, I love dance. I love to dance. I taught dance for 20 years, ballet and jazz. And you know, I got the music in me. I love to dance forever and ever. So guess what? You know, in the early days, he didn't dance. But through the years, um, he probably was a little uncomfortable dancing, right? My comfort zone, not his. But, you know, he learned to go and dance with me. Like sometimes he'd just kind of go back and forth, back and forth like guys do, you know. But since then, he's learned a lot more moves. And we have a lot of fun in that. And by... Um, exercising that and doing it. It's like we, you know, he, he's gotten better and better, but we have a good time at that. So what's important to your spouse and what's important to you? Well, you sit down and have a conversation about that. And first you ask, you know, what's really important to you? What do you really want to, you know, see in our marriage? What are things you want to do? You know, how do you want me to treat you when you come in? What's most important to you? And then if they don't ask, you know, say, well, can I share what's most important to me? And this is also where different temperaments come in. Like I said, tone of voice, straightforward or kind. And we each have different needs. Like, you know, this kind of goes into the love languages. Some people need that touch and that might be sitting beside each other watching TV every night. Some people have that thing where they need time with their spouse or they don't feel important. Um, some, they need gifts. Like when you go shopping for me and you buy me a special little gift, it shows me that you were thinking about me. Um, and there's several others, but understanding what your spouse needs. Some people need to sit in peace and quiet. Is that you? Is that your spouse? And some people need to be able to get out in public and go do some fun things or have some adventures, do or see something new, right? My own parents, um, my dad, as he's retired, he will go and meet with the guys for a biscuit every morning. And why is that? Because he's a real people person and he's energized by people. It, it like makes the rest of his day 
go well because he got to go out and be with people. And my mom, she's content being at home and, you know, just peace and quiet, watch TV, read a book, you know, having some peace, peace and quiet time. But he needs that people time. You know, that's what's made it work for them is that he makes sure he takes care of what's really important to him. And he likes to get out and chat with people and talk with people and laugh. So people have different needs. So the fifth one is seek first to understand and then be understood. The sixth one is uh, it's all of the above. And there's one more after this, but the sixth one is synergize. I love those words, synergize, because I like to be around people who have a lot of positive energy. Synergize. Well, let's look at this. If you are proactive and you're paying attention to what you want to see, then you're going to get more of what you want to see. Did you know that there are people who are always thinking about the negative side and what they don't want? I think you get more of what you think about. So if I were you, I would be thinking about what I want to see. The second thing was, remember, we create what we want to see. Begin with the end in mind. The third one was first things first. Stop and reorder. I mean, this is something we have to do over and over because I don't know about you, but I'm a little messy. And so I like clean everything up and I'll organize it once in a while. And afterwards, I'm like, oh, it looks so good. It's all reordered. But guess what? It gets messy again. And marriage and life is the same way. We think everything's going along great. And then one day it's like, oh, everything got messy. Now we're being reactive instead of proactive. And we're not putting first things first anymore. And we're not paying attention to what we really want to see in our marriage. The fourth one is creating that win-win. You win and I win. How can we go about this? How can we meet in the middle and both of us win. And fifth thing was, we just did seek to understand how we are creating a positive energy and positive vibe and positive life. How are we doing that? And the seventh one, because now we're synergized, right? Because we're following all those things. The seventh one is to sharpen your saw. There was a story about a guy in the woods, and you might hear me tell this a few times because it's so important. There was a guy in the woods and he was cutting down a tree and this man was walking through the woods and he heard some noise and he stopped to listen and he started watching the guy cutting down the tree. The guy was sweating and fussing and tired. He'd probably been cutting down that tree for quite a while. And the man walking through the woods, he thought, well, I wonder if I should say anything to him. You know, some people don't want any advice or any help. They don't want any help. You know, but he thought, well, I got to say something to him. Hey, sir, have you thought about stopping and sharpening your saw? The guy said, what? I don't have any time to stop and do anything. I've been cutting down this tree for three hours and it's just coming down slow. Go away. I don't need your advice. And so the guy went back to cutting down the tree. You know, how long is it going to take him to cut down that tree? Well, you know, when we think about our marriage, if we're not being proactive and we're being reactive and day in and day out, you know, the husband's coming home and we're thinking, oh no, he's home. <laughs> you know, what happens when he walks through those doors? If we're not getting what we want to get, we have to stop and think, what do we need to do or know? And what I've found is, even if you're a proactive person and maybe you're a positive thinking person, you're a giving person, a concerned person, you empathize, you, you love deeply, but you're having trouble with your spouse. And every time you think things are going great, there's big blow ups and arguments and frustrations. Then at some point you start to be reactive. You know, those emotions come up and you're feeling frustrated the emotions start coming up and now you're forgetting to be proactive. It's human. It's normal. Don't feel bad. But you want to figure out how can you sharpen your saw? How can you make your marriage better? 
How can you create that vision of what you want to see in your marriage? Well, one thing is you can create traditions, sit down together, talk about, you know, what kind of traditions your husband's family had and what kind of traditions you have and figure out how you want to blend those together to make your own traditions because it doesn't have to be just like his family or just like yours. Find things that you like to do together and know that there will be some things you don't do together, but find the things that you like to do together. Explore a little, you know, have a little adventure. Go to seminars, learn online, read books, figure it out. So a year from now, you know, it's leap day, 2024. A year from now, there won't even be a day on the 29th of February, will there? But in a year from now, you don't want to be in the same place that you are now. If there's challenges, you know what? I have a uh, a gift for you and it is called Why Loving Couples Argue and Fight. It's an eight minute recording and a PDF. Uh, that uh, shares some of the things to the point with you, but you want to listen to that eight minute recording because sometimes things are simpler than you think they are. They're simpler than you think they are. But if we keep doing the same things we've been doing, we'll keep getting the same things we've been getting. And if you want to make a change and you want to make a difference in your marriage, you want your life to be different or better You know, things might not even be too bad, but you do have a few disagreements. Well, it's up to you. You have the power to do something about it. So go to um, the, um, uh, the extraordinary marriage slash, excuse me, the extraordinary marriage.com slash podcast and find this episode leap day, leap day. Let me look back at the beginning name here. Call for Leap Day Marital Tranquility. And if you want more tranquility in your marriage, grab Why Loving Couples Argue and Fight. You will surely find out five reasons that they fight. And you probably haven't really thought about it because we're always being reactive instead of being proactive. You'll find that on the podcast on this episode. Thank you for listening. I'm Connie Durham, your host, and I hope you'll join me next week for the Extraordinary Marriage podcast.